alcohol being a central nervous system depressant, um, as I said, it can affect all, all sorts of functions um, in the central nervous system, and that can be memory, concentration, uh, reasoning, mathematical calculations, and e even can affect your psychomotor performance. So what we see in the cockpit, how that translates to the operational environment is things like missed radio calls, miscalculations, uh, problems with uh, maintaining vigilance and scanning, uh, and we can also see effects on the relationship if there are more than one pilot on the, co on the cockpit, relationship effects from, from alcohol. My personal standard with alcohol and other drugs is a zero tolerance where I make sure that if I'm coming to, to work for any flight operations duty or any administrative duty, I know that I have a zero alcohol or drug content. We have a zero tolerance of drugs and alcohol and uh, if for some reason or other you get called in early, it behoves the person involved to put his hand up and say, no, I finished drinking it uh, only uh, seven or eight hours ago and I uh, feel I cannot do the job. And that is appreciated by the uh, chief pilot that you have spoken up. The way we manage it is we make very clear what our expectations are to pilots. Um, particularly young pilots, they like to go out the night before and have, you know, have a few drinks and uh, we have seen a couple of cases of that over the years and we'll just pull them from duty and say, look, that's not acceptable. And just by simply pulling that pilot from duty it sends a pretty clear message to everyone else that, you know, we don't tolerate that sort of thing. The pilot uh, has to take a holistic view of where he's been and what he's been doing the last couple of days. Uh, certainly in terms of alcohol concentration, that's affected by all sorts of things. Gender, weight, whether you've eaten or not, uh, how quickly you've imbibed the alcohol, how much you've imbibed, uh, but also the effects of alcohol are synergistic with other issues such as any medications you might be taking or any fatigue. And when we say synergistic, what that means is if you had one plus one, it doesn't equal two, it equals three. So if you've got fatigue plus alcohol, you're really getting a very significant performance impairment. One of the common questions that arises is whether pilots can take sleeping pills. They're designed to put you to sleep. And therefore, for a period after taking them, your performance is significantly impaired. The use of sleeping pills in relation to aviation has to be very carefully controlled. Long-haul pilots, for example, may take sleeping pills that are short-acting under the direction of an aviation medical practitioner with adequate time prior to the duty. But the unsupervised use of sleeping tablets can be a real risk and can actually lead to increased fatigue and performance decrements. So it's important that anyone who's considering using sleeping pills in relation to managing their sleep deprivation issues discusses it with an aviation medical practitioner. It's extremely important that you be in a fit state and never ever try and mix even the, uh, the light medicine because nobody's really going to know the, the impact of mixing medication and or then high altitudes, constantly changing environment. You know, even for a fit person, we go from 30 degrees and extreme humidity at sea level to sudden up in a fairly dry, whatever you're going to be, at 20, 25,000 uh, with reduced oxygen levels and so on. Your body and your brain will not function 100% at those levels when you're in an ex extremely fit state. A good strategy is to do some ground trials ahead of time, particularly if there's medications you take uh, are likely to take commonly, it's important to make sure that you don't have any unusual reactions. Something as simple as a mild headache and taking some Patadol, that's fine to fly. But anything more than that, anything that could be distracting, painful or cause any decongestant, uh, any congestant problems with your ears or your sinuses of course, you need to consider whether you should be flying or not.